August Barnes asks, what are the downsides to using a 2207-2450 kV motor on a 4-inch quad? Will I run into any issues other than unnecessary weight? Ooh, that's an interesting question. So, um, August Barnes, um, the reason that like a 5-inch motor is, is a paired well that matches well with a 5-inch prop has to do with mm, two things, I'd say. Number one is the KV, okay? So for a given size of prop, there is a given RPM that the prop kind of wants to be spinning at to work well. So if you have a really big prop and you try and spin it at too high of an RPM, the tip of the prop will approach the speed of sound and like totally can happen because you know, we're swinging these props at tens of thousands of RPMs on some of them. The tip of the prop approaches the speed of sound. When things approach the speed of sound, it gets real bad. It's it's very, very bad. So you don't want that. That's the ceiling. On, on the other side, if the prop spins too slowly, it won't make enough thrust. And then the quadcopter won't take off into the air. So you need a motor that has a KV rating that is going to spin the prop in the suitable RPM range for the prop to make thrust to cause the quadcopter to fly. And 20, 2450 kV on a four inch is too low. Like um, I, I think that you would want to be around 3000 kV, for example. I don't know, I don't do a lot of work with four inch props. So I don't like have the kV numbers just nailed on the top of my head. So you're probably still gonna get in the air with 2450 kV, but you're not gonna have as much top end power as you would otherwise need. Okay? So then the other thing is that the size of the motors, what you want out of a motor is a big enough motor to, to swing the prop with authority. Now, what does that mean? A multi-rotor changes the speed of the prop constantly. And the, the, the speed of the prop needs to change as quickly as possible. The, probably the single biggest determination in how well a multi-rotor flies is how quickly the prop can change speed. I, Having said that, I now can think of a couple other things that you could argue for, but what the hell, I'm going to lean into it for the sake of this conversation. It's really important. So the torque of the motor is generally proportional to the volume of the stator. So you a motor that's too small will not be able to accelerate the prop very rapidly. It will be not very responsive and it'll get super hot. It won't be able to dissipate heat. So you need a motor that is big enough to, to generate enough torque to swing the prop with authority and to dissipate the heat that's going to be built up and then no bigger. Because once the motor gets bigger than that, the additional torque is wasted. The additional heat dissipation is wasted and you're carrying a ton of additional weight. And the other thing is it's harder to build high KV big motors. It's easier to make a small motor go uh, at very high RPM. Big motors going at very high RPM have to be balanced very precisely because they they have a lot more mass. Okay. So what you're doing with a 2207-2450 is you're carrying additional weight that you don't need. You are making less thrust because your KV is too low and your props aren't going to spin fast enough to generate as much thrust as they could generate. And yeah, that's it, right? That's about it. Uh, the weight, okay? You don't care about the weight. You're also getting less thrust because the KV is too low. So why would you use uh, like a 3000 KV 2207 if you could find such a thing? And I'm not sure that you could, but maybe you could. Well, you could. Now you're just carrying additional weight for no reason. Uh, and the final thing, I guess, is mounting hardware. Like a lot of times, like you'll have 16 millimeter versus 19 millimeter versus 12 millimeter mounting holes. And the spacing of the mounting holes on the motor may not fit the frame. So, yeah, Black Moses points out there is no four inch frame with 19 by 19 or 16 by 16 mounting anyway. So you won't be able to mount the motors. That's, yep. All right.